So it's my great privilege to introduce you to Eric from Axe Way. And when I asked for Eric for some interesting facts to share with you, um, his interesting facts was that he's actually had a very international career in Mexico, New York, um, and, and traveling around the world. So we're going to get that international feel, um, and we're actually going to start with a map. So um, bang on cue on that one. And, and also, he's very passionate about the ecosystem and the environment, which, um, just as an aside, I just thought it would be interesting to, to learn something around the speaker um, and, and more about um, his journey of how he got here. The other thing that I, I would like to say is that Eric actually is the founder of a deep tech, um, which is, which is uh, li like a fintech. I'm, I'm from the world of fintech. Mm -hmm. so, and which he, so he's actually walked the walk and, and sold that uh, fintech to uh, another corporation. So a, a huge, le a lot of learnings, a lot, I'm getting tongue tied, huge, a lot of learnings for us all. So Eric, I'm just gonna grab my phone and I am gonna pass over to everybody. My job is to make sure we finish on time. So we will take questions at the end rather than the way through, if that's okay. Good evening. No, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so who, who knows what is the Beagle? Or who doesn't know what is the Beagle? Everybody knows the Beagle Voyage. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, a voyage in the uh, banking ecosystem, uh, looking at the environmental changes that have been brought up by uh, the digital age. So we're going to see uh, how banks started a few years ago, and then where some of them still stand, uh, which is the open banking uh, phase and then how some of them are actually getting uh, leaner and uh, more agile, to some of them actually p uh, making money with a product in the API space, and finally some of them having built a platform. So these are different stages, uh, and this is the analogy I'm gonna use all, all around the, um, the speaker. So I was introduced, work at Axway. So Axway, we built uh, software, for uh, companies and governments to build platforms for their B2B ecosystem. And I'm in charge of the APIs and data integration there. So I was banking in the 2000s. That was cool, easy. Um, there was a lot of food because a 6% interest rate made fish abundant. You didn't have to, uh, uh, to work a lot to, to attract them. You would, uh, you would have a lot of fun, and you were fit for that environment at that time. So let's talk about fitness. Um, in terms of agility, you didn't need to be flying or even running. Uh, in terms of customer acquisition, you just needed to pick them. You didn't need to service them. Uh, but you were a fit for purpose. Now, culturally, um, you were flocking. So there was no need for innovation, just looking at what others were doing and just doing the same thing. And you were pretty closed, not trying to uh, innovate and cooperate with other species. Now, what about the clients? Us. So we were analog clients. Um, very low expectation. We just wanted to not be eaten by others, and we wanted to eat. Um, we didn't communicate between us about you know, our uh, financial dreams and horizons projects. And we were in, uninformed uh, w because of our limited senses. So that's back then. Now, this is the digital client. We're having fun. We want simple experiences. We're volatile. We pick stuff. We're smart. We care about our financial fitness for ourselves, our kids, our grandsons, and forever we think about the future. And we communicate, we're social. So as you imagine, these guys are no longer fit for that species. So let's talk about what happened. Well, it's pretty much like the uh, environmental change. The digital age, um, is something that happened over the past 30 years, uh, whereby the temperature has actually gone hot for lots of traditional good old players. 
And we can say that most of this come from one thing, which is the rise of APIs. If you compare the growth of APIs and the growth of uh, CO2, you can actually bring an analogy where APIs are actually creating a market where digital assets from different companies can be compared, selected, like species. And same thing with, uh, with uh, the CO2. You know, the more you have CO2, the more uh, the temperature is going to raise for global warming. So APIs and the adoption of APIs is an indicator of the digital age. Same way CO2 is to, um, is to global warming. Big difference, global warming is bad, APIs is good. So, but I still made the analogy. So uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, talk about uh, neobanks after that, so I'm not going to cover them. But you can think that in this new environment that's uh, warmer with different species, um, some new species came. I'm thinking about neobanks like uh, Monzo, Revolut, uh, number 26, but also bigger ones, bigger cats like uh, Aiden or Stripe or uh, others. They are fit for purpose, excellent at uh, targeting a market and being uh, very good at it. So this is, uh, this is a new species that happened when an environment changed, new species uh, appear. Then you have species that already existed and evolved. Uh, for, for example, the telco market, um, everybody knows about the M-Pesa case by Vodafone, yeah? So, to uh, help people in Kenya to start um, become banked. So they, they really helped with financial inclusion by uh, leveraging their infrastructure to give banking to people. And Orange did the same thing uh, in Africa and uh, Eastern Europe. Now let's talk about the tech giants. Uh, so same thing, existing species that have come to the new environment because of the because of the rise of um, temperature. And here we're going to go fast about what happened this year uh, in this environment for banks. So last time we saw each other, we we're talking about Google, Apple, Facebook going into pay, pay, pay. Uh, we didn't talk much about WeChat and uh, Alibaba. Since then, uh, we've seen that Facebook has actually created an ecosystem of companies to create a cryptocurrency that would bank uh, or equip 2.2 billion people, which is a massive competition to our central banks. We've seen also Facebook create uh, 124 patents in wealth management. Yeah, Facebook uh, cares about your financial fitness. We've seen Apple this year um, go into financial wellness with MasterCard and Goldman Sachs. And the big difference is that these are not species. These are ecosystem. They are not competing in the jungle. They are the jungle. So this is a big difference between being a company and being a platform. And this is what lots of companies are trying to, uh, to create. So uh, it goes on. Google Bank, just recently. Uh, so we have bank accounts by Google. Now Google in insurance, so they had Nest. Uh, they had invested $325 million in Oscar, which is a health insurance company, and they just acquired Fitbit. So think about all the data they're going to have so that they can propose a very well-designed insurance product to each of us that's going to be cheaper and better. Well, beware, insurers. And now, I want to have a look into China uh, with uh, those two uh, tech giants. So those uh, companies actually found an, op an opportunity with uh, red envelopes, which are presents you exchange um, for the new year. And they, thanks to that angle, they managed to capture more than 90% of the mobile payments in China. So if you're a bank in China, forget about payment. It's over. There is no food anymore. So knowing that, some companies stay in denial. Some companies just want to ignore the situation. But I don't think there are that many now because most people are aware of what's going on in terms of new entrants, new species, 
uh, coming in the, to, to, uh, to be fed out of what they consider to be their food. But we'll still have some uh, extinct uh, species uh, in banking in the next five to 10 years. Uh, they will probably be on the red, red list of uh, banking. We'll talk about it uh, probably here in 10 years. Uh, and that's unfortunate, but that's because you know, it takes a lot of courage to actually change, to change. So first evolution is, okay, let's go on the ground and find some food elsewhere because um, our food has disappeared. And that's the open banking phase. Open banking starts either with, okay, I have a non-discretionary project to comply with PSD2, so I'm gonna put the budget on it and we're gonna comply with the regulation. Or, oh, it's pretty cool to say that we're associated with, with uh, FinTech, our shareholders are gonna love it, so let's, um, communicate about uh, collaboration with fintechs. Oh, and by the way, what's this API stuff? What's going on? And then they discover, and then they realize the temperature has raised for a reason, and then they start having an existentialism problem, which is, why am I here? What's my purpose as a bank? Why am I irrelevant? If you stay like this, yeah. Um, or do I want to find a new purpose in this environment? It's a really tough spot to be in, and we, we had some testimonies already today about this being in this spot. But you don't need to stay in that spot. The first thing you need to do is to change the culture. As uh, Roman was saying, the software is going to reflect your culture, uh, the Conway principle. So we see banks getting into a phase of let's change. And it's really hard. It takes three, five years. It takes buy-in from top management. It takes a lot of uh, energy from middle management. A lot of change. Change is hard. Change doesn't need to be done unless you really need to, uh, to morph into something new. And there are lots of areas to cover, most of them human areas. So Pretty much, you need to go from a top-down culture to a vision culture, where you, you don't want to engage your employees. You give them uh, reasons to be inspired. You don't act as a centralized uh, organization. You have to distribute the, uh, the, the senses and the listening to your teams so that you can be fit for the, your ecosystem. You don't think in terms of KPIs. You think in terms of OKRs. You don't think in terms of projects, you think in terms of products. You don't think closed, introverted. You think open, extroverted. You don't think about market share, you think about mind share for your audience because the digital economy is based on the attention economy. You want to get and uh, attract and keep the attention of your audience and you will then indirectly monetize this by distributing a good service to them that uh, allows you to make money. So that's a huge cultural change. And APIs help in this area because APIs force the organization to think outwards and provide a service which is uh, scalable to the outer world so that the internal systems need to adapt to service the out outside world and layers by layers, you can actually change your entire organization to become innovative, fast, and able to grab opportunities where they stand. You fly now. So you're not an eagle yet, you're just a cormorant. Let's have a look at the next stage, which is once you're ready with some agility, once you've learned to be fast, you can think about delivering a product that matters to the, uh, to the ecosystem. So, you have to become purposeful. Uh, you have to nurture your users. You have to think about their financial fitness. You have to be fit with a site. And you have to design experiences for them. And you have to be agile. So, this is a... Uh, uh, parenthesis, a 
kind of conversation I like to have with banks right now uh, about how do I build uh, an experience that matter with my customers. I'm gonna go fast on it, but uh, let's imagine I'm uh, talking to a product manager at a bank and he needs to design a journey for a young couple. So the challenge is to build an uh, interesting experience out of something that's pretty complex. So typically data comes from you know, a PFM like Plaid for uh, grabbing their uh, investment horizons and projects. Uh, you typically have uh, data yourself in a database internally. You do your lead management with, it, with UpSpot. You send your emails with MailChimp. And you take care of uh, your service with ServiceNow. And you have a mortgage rating with a mortgage API. And the reason why you would know whether uh, that couple that declared that they wanted to buy an apartment uh, is uh, as, as a product that fit their need is thanks to an API, a third party API called Zillow. So what you wanna do is grab their uh, data, put it in uh, an API, which is a bank moments. That API is gonna pull the uh, Zillow API. Uh, you will enrich the data from Oracle the minute uh, there is a match between what they want and uh, what the market does, it's gonna create an event. Before engaging the customer, you wanna make sure there is no incident or uh, complaint that's logged with that customer. If it is, then you have to prioritize them. Once they're taken care of, then you're gonna create the lead and, and start the real engagement. So this is what you wanna do as a product manager, and you wanna do this at scale. It's hard. Uh, even if the opportunity is, is huge, there is a huge risk of be, being locked in with multiple vendors, and that's where APIs help. And it's pretty complex in terms of uh, low-level infrastructure, in terms of cloud, your APIs, their APIs. So you have to do all this in a, in a secure fashion. So this helps, and uh, some companies actually make progress towards that direction. So I'm just gonna go around the globe. Uh, so this is in Indonesia, a new bank uh, create, created by BTPN called Genius. I like the design, pretty simple, pretty cool, you know, as cool as Stripe. Um, the, you, know, you, you, wanna, you, you wanna create an account. Another one that I like is Suncorp in Australia. They started to create a platform uh, that actually comes with that experience of helping you navigate with insurance and uh, real estate issues based on your life moments. Another one is uh, Commerce Bank that uh, started their API program pretty recently, but uh, from the beginning started to integrate third-party APIs to create integrated moments for their customers. Uh, one I use is BNP Paribas. They, they've actually integrated uh, with tons of partners in order to provide an experience that matter for, uh, for their end client. And uh, a rare case of data, they claim or they say or they know that they have 40% now of their business out of APIs. Think about it. That means that without a serious API program and success, they would have uh, like half of the current revenue they have. So they would be in, uh, in trouble, but now they're thriving thanks to APIs. And the last one in terms of data that I like is another Indonesian bank, Permata Bank. So they, they said that uh, thanks to APIs, they were able to acquire 72% uh, of their new accounts and uh, they've managed to, to, to grow by 68% thanks to that. It's huge. And they were doing it by uh, getting loan origination and wealth management be done by third-party fintech. And they would be the ones servicing the journey of customers interested in a loan or wealth management uh, discussion, they service them as a platform. It's amazing, great numbers. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about a, a cool experience. I went to Singapore, so this is the airport. So it looks like the 1990s. That's you know typical ATM. And then you get into the cab, sorry for the quality of the pictures, but the only three options were Alipay, WeChat, and uh, DBS. I'm like, whoa, that's different from Paris. Uh, and then I uh, met with DBS and started to, th to, to learn about their journey. They've been on their journey for seven years. They've been into the agile 
uh, methodology for all that long, thanks to the CEO who met with uh, the founder of Alibaba early on and realized that he was in trouble. He's still stressed about it. For those who haven't visited it, uh, their API portal is amazing. Um, Arnaud uh, API Handyman was telling me that he's using them for, the, for, for, his, uh, for his own demo because it's, uh, it's very well built, which is surprising from a large institution, but uh, is a result of this cultural change. So go there, BBS developers, and look at that. The stock went from $7 to $27 over 10 years. Uh, I don't know of many other banks that are in that situation. And Piyush Gupta is a guy to follow. Um, he said that he's, he was positively surprised by the fact that he could thrive in an environment that he thought would be more competitive, uh, but it's still its uh, biggest nightmare is those uh, tech giants coming in to eating his lunch. All right, so as a takeaway, think about where you stand or where your customers stand in the, uh, in the journey from uh, discovering APIs into becoming a platform that is facilitated through the exchange of uh, business data through APIs. And thank you very much. Last thing, I recommend this expo you have uh, at the Natural History Museum where you're gonna see this amazing picture. Uh, the guy actually waited two years to be able to take the picture for that moment. Determined photographer. <laughs> uh, Eric, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> before you step down, I now know why when I asked for some interesting facts, you said travel and the ecosystem. That's a very clever lead into your presentation, so thank you. <laughs> uh, before we move on to the next speaker, uh, we had a whistle-stop tour, on, and it was a, an amazing content. You really did pack it in. Thank you, Eric. Um, has anybody got any questions for Eric? Because um, Agita has, has got a mic. I hopefully I pronounced her name right as well. So please, can we have a couple of questions before we get our next speaker up, please? If not, you'll be able to catch Eric at the end of the day. So that allows us to move on in a timely way. Eric, please, everybody, show your appreciation for Eric, who has clearly worked amazingly hard to get all that content.